What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster back here on this Tuesday night, January 17th, 2023. It's about 9.23 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And latest quake shows a 0.9, little microquake, kicking up down there in the area of uh, Southern California. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here across the USGS map. Got some movement coming in here to the Mediterranean region where we've seen a 5.0 coming in. Uh, just north of Libya into the Mediterranean Sea, about 10 kilometers deep. Still lacking activity across this region though. I haven't really seen any major westward pressure movement. Uh, another earthquake over here, just uh, into the Japan region, a 4.8 coming in just about, uh, oh, almost an hour or so ago. Uh, I did get another notification about an earthquake here in the Philippines, so let me see if that's been uh, updated or not. Um, somewhere in the mix, I noticed that there's still a lot of activity kicking up here around the region, about Taiwan southward through the Philippines, and definitely into the area around the Banda Sea area and um, Maluka Sea region, all seeing some activity today. Uh, now, we did see that 6.0 come in there to the Indonesia area. Uh, so still looking at a good amount of pressure building up here in this region, but it's halted still right about the northern end of the Java Trench. Um, down here into the Fiji area, Tonga region, getting some activity back building up here on the surface levels. Uh, this could be a good indicator of some strain building up in the region, about 15 kilometers deep here at the surface. One earthquake also this morning, it looks like... Um, at one o'clock in the morning, we did see a 4.9 surface surface level quake. Remember, we have seen quite a bit of deep earthquake activity here into the Tonga Trench recently. Uh, looks like we may be starting to see a little bit of a strain built up uh, at the uh, surface levels. Now, over here in Northern California, did see a little bit of activity as well throughout the afternoon, evening, or uh, afternoon and morning time period. A couple twos and some ones. This area has been showing quite a bit of seismic activity recently around there. Uh, just above the trimmer level, about 18 kilometers uh, down into the Cascadia subduction zone. Now the trimmer map tonight shows about 237 epicenters of trimmer, mostly there in northern California at the very extreme southern end of the Cascadia megathrust. Uh, and that could be explaining the uh, surface activity upstream as far as the earthquake movement goes. But also at the same time, got to remember this is building up uh, quite a bit of strain uh, in the region of the Cascadia. Uh, the rest of California, we got one earthquake uh, outside of the Calistoga region. Looks like a 1.7 coming in. The rest of Northern California, fairly quiet. Uh, Southern California, getting a little bit of uptick in movement. Uh, some very small microquakes just outside the Salton City area, 1.2. A little bit of activity up and down these uh, specific fault zones here. No major uptick, no major swarm along that major plate boundary known as the San Andreas Fault. For now, she sleeps, and that's good. Um, southeastern Idaho, of course, seen some activity here this morning time period. Not really seeing anything popping up here in Yellowstone, but I was checking out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here, and it looks as though there's some activity kicking up here. Um, into the region, uh, let's see here, potentially eastern area of the park. Now that six pointer into the, um, what was that region over here around the Banda Sea area? That was at about, uh, 1634. So UTC time is going to be 0034. I'm kind of curious to see if some of this 0034 that could be that's probably more than likely the signature there from that six pointer it did show up fairly nicely um across the area of the yellowstone seismograph stations here notice that uh signature pretty uh prominent on there but uh as far as local seismic activity goes there's not a lot but there has been uh looks like maybe a little bit of activity kind of hard to decipher exactly where it's at uh, maybe around the Maple Creek area. It's also showing up here around Parker Peak. Uh, and that's going to be some of this seismic activity here, but uh, no well-defined location. 
for now and uh, nothing really showing up here across the USGS map there in Wyoming now look at Oklahoma holy smokes Oklahoma is a rocking and rolling today with about seven earthquakes scattered out and about uh, all the way up north of uh, well Medford Oregon into the Waquita trend and gas fields wouldn't you know it a uh, little bit of activity up there today now satellite imagery here I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys real quick um, you can already see some of this out here on these roads quite a bit of uh, pumping operations it looks like uh, some of those appear to be well, it's hard to tell this one doesn't really zoom in super close but it is out there in that named oil field and this earthquake 2.1 striking out there in some type of pond now I'm not for sure how much wastewater injection disposal sites are out there but you can kind of see them peppered out there in the map of that region of Oklahoma now out here around uh, looks like Carmen Oklahoma 2.8 coming in today and also a 2.0 roughly within oh, about 11 minutes of each other uh, and there's also some oil pumping operations out here as well notice that uh, feature there in the land some older ones starting to be erased off of the land it looks like well they're still there uh, but these two earthquakes striking within very close proximity of a bunch of oil pumping operations and wastewater disposal facilities out there in Oklahoma. Um, down south of Norman, I'm kind of curious to see what's out here. Do we get, well, East Washington oil field, Washington oil fields, a lot of uh, oil fields out here. And Purcell, let's see here, kind of hard to tell. There's one, there's a wastewater pond, very close, 2.3. This is literally within feet of that earthquake, 2.3 earthquake. Uh, but yeah, that's not somebody's swimming pool. It's not a uh, you know, little pond for the cattle out there to drink from. This is wastewater disposal uh, facility. All right, so uptick definitely across the interior portion of the North American plate. Uh, that should add further strain out here around the New Madrid zone. We did see a little bit of activity this morning uh, near the Tennessee area, 1.2 coming in, about 9 kilometers deep. The rest of the country looks pretty quiet, though, for now. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Caribbean plate uh, looks like um, mostly uh, typical activity down here around Puerto Rico. Typical swarming out here on the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. South America region, we have seen definitely an uptick uh, this morning, but it looks as though things have come to a halt. Last earthquake within this area, 4.3 Chile, about 11 o'clock this morning time period. Now the EMSC model roughly confirms that as well with the older movement quakes there in the red. So it uh, definitely appears as though we're looking at a westward pressure movement here. Uh, across areas of the Philippines and uh, Taiwan area, Japan, New Zealand even seen a little bit of uptick today uh, and more recently within the last couple hours with a 3.1 and a 3.2. Nothing being reported here by the USGS. So uh, for that, let's go ahead and check out the uh, GeoNet servers out here and see what we have cooking. 30 minutes ago, 2.9 just east of Taupo Super Volcano. Uh, eight hours ago there, it looks like there was a 3.6. Now let's go to the all magnitudes. Get a better description of what's going on out here. Quite a bit of uptick here. It looks like some twos and threes. And uh, nothing big, just just a noticeable uptick in some uh, the multitude of quakes here. The volcanic drums across the area. Let's see if that's going to confirm the movement. Not really showing up, uh, at least anywhere near these volcanic stations here. Uh, most of the activity, I believe, was north of here. Uh, but yeah, a lot of that movement definitely not showing up here uh, over the last couple hours absent. But either way, obviously no major uptick in movement out there across New Zealand currently. A little activity up in uh, Iran. That was from this morning, it looks like a 4.5, 10 kilometers deep. Atlantic Ocean, besides from this 5.1 that kicked off early this morning, haven't really seen anything else pop up here. Things are uh, relatively quiet across the Atlantic for now. 
Big Island in Hawaii, about the same as it was uh, in this morning's update. No major changes noted there. Uh, same for about the Alaska region up here. It's uh, looking very typical. Actually, things have kind of calmed down across the area for now. Only about 45 earthquakes, which is very typical for the area up here in Alaska. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. I don't think we've seen any uh, added volcanoes out here across the map. Kilauea Volcano, of course, still continuing to uh, stay in the eruptive stage. As uh, mentioned in the update this morning, a look at the seismograph stations here across the area. Maybe we'll see if we can get it to work. <laughs> Shows relatively calm conditions. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up across the Kilauea Volcano region. And up here around the Mauna Loa area, Things are uh, still offline for the most part, it looks like. Oh, there we go. There's a station that's working. Looks like some very small earthquake activity up there. No major movement. And as uh, far as the tilt meter goes up there, let's uh, zoom in just a little bit here and see what we got uh, for the area. Not a camera. I want to check out the tilt meter here. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Um, it's obviously been gradually increasing here uh, since the eruption halted there at Mauna Loa back on the 10th of December. Uh, I've seen a, definitely a noticeable uptrend here, it seems like, over the last few days. Nothing major, but definitely uh, swelling up a little bit. We'll continue to watch that and see how it uh, plays out. Space weather activity. Keeping an eye on things out here. Things are increasing as far as the number of sunspots go and the uh, in intensity of the sunspots. We did see a couple. Now we've seen at least one M flare earlier today, a 1M.8 looks like. And uh, another upper C flare coming in currently on the X-ray flux chart. Now a look at the um, current flares. Hard to really can't see anything. It looks like this area right, right here is starting to flare up a little bit. And this could be the one that could provide us with some, uh, well, some views here if it uh, decides to pop off a major X flare and a subsequent CME. It is a massive, giant sunspot here, 3190, right? Let's see if that's it, 3190. That's going to be it. That is looking very promising here, uh, and it, it's lining up, folks. It's just just about directly Earth facing. Uh, and lined up with this planet to uh, produce some geo-effective space weather conditions if it does decide to pop off a major flare and a major CME. We'll keep this one under watch very closely. Very closely. Uh, a couple of these other sunspots do harbor some potential for some strong flares as well. Uh, super huge sunspot up here as well, but I think we need to watch 3190 right there as, we, uh, as it wants to come around face us and hopefully get fairly active. Now right now there's about 15% chance for an X flare, 60% chance for an M flare, and 99% chance for a C flare. And again 3190 looks to be the most complex magnetic structure out here with a beta gamma. Now they have updated it looks like all of these um, sunspot regions here to about beta. Uh, nothing looks any, um, doesn't look really complex out here. There's an alpha but the most one right now that we need to watch is the one I just mentioned, 3190, that is currently facing, currently uh, really close uh, into uh, the Earth's view. And as you can see, that's most likely the source of the current sea flare that we're seeing. All these other sunspots are not lighting up like this one. So we'll watch it. Uh, this might be our lucky day here. We can see some space weather activity really ramping up. We did get a little bit of activity ramping up here in the KP index earlier today, four to five range it looks like. Uh, still seeing some unsettled conditions here at the Aurora levels up in the higher latitudes. Uh, for us here in the States, it doesn't look likely, but uh, in the Canada, Alaska, um, Iceland and Greenland looks potentially active there for the Auroras. Uh, looks like maybe a uh, about 30% chance, 30 to 50% chance here over the next couple nights. No major coronal holes facing us. There is one starting to develop, 68. It is currently facing us, so we'll watch that. 
Uh, here's a little bit better view of it. You can kind of see the darker regions and um, kind of see how it plays out in the coming days. All I know is this here, 3190. That is something to watch pretty closely. It's been a while since we've had a major developing sunspot like that uh, currently, you know, with, within our view. All right, uh, weather forecast here. Looking at the West Coast, I know that's kind of been the uh, hot topic for past couple weeks, but we're in a dry period here in Northern California. We do have one more cold system coming down here in the Northern California tomorrow during the day and evening time period. Just I think we're only expecting maybe three tenths of an inch of rain uh, for the Chico area, some snow up in the mountains. This is a rather cold system and rather dry. Nothing like what we've seen here uh, earlier, in, earlier in January. And the extended forecast here shows continued clear conditions. Cold, though, uh, around the 25th of January. And possibly maybe get a... Looks like we may be starting to get uh, some storm systems coming in. Trying to come in towards the first week of February. So we'll watch that and see how this plays out. But either way, we have a couple weeks of some drying out. Seeing some sunshine today. Things are starting to get super green due to all the rain. But uh, we do have some cold nights coming up uh, here in California. And, uh, of course, some more snow tomorrow. And a little bit, just a little bit more rain, uh, which will be fine. Or, you know, things are starting to soak up out here fairly nicely. I don't really have any standing water here on the property. So we are good to go for at least a couple more tenths of an inch of rain. All right, uh, what else is there? National Data Buoy Center, something I like to check out when there's mega earthquakes. Right now, there's no mega earthquakes, and nothing doesn't uh, doesn't look like it's in event mode out here. Things look fairly calm across the area, which is good, right? That's what we want. Don't want anything major going on. Alrighty, folks, I am uh, going to jump off. Also, the uh, New Zealand quakes up here, New Zealand quakes online, uh, the site that Timothy runs here, um, is up and running. I believe he did an update here today on his site, and uh, things uh, look pretty good. I checked that out earlier on my uh, other computer here, so if you want uh, some information on earthquake activity, New Zealand region, and of course other areas, check it out. Got a pretty cool site built up there. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. We Check out that deep earthquake, 3.7. Looks like it's trying to make its way up here into the Myanmar area, well north of the Java Trench. Again, this has been our halted area. This region right here has been uh, our cutoff point as far as the westward pressure movement goes. Looks as though it's trying. So uh, I think when this area does kick up, we're going to see something a little bit on the larger side. But uh, again, we'll continue to watch it and report on it and uh, provide updates as they uh, happen. Have a good night, folks. We will catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime Wednesday already. It's already Wednesday. Weekend's right around the corner. We'll catch you guys later. Have a good night.